It's Platt, and today I try a big beer. That's next to Platt's Beer of the Week. So the particular beer we have today is the Pilsner. It comes to us from Warsteiner. Uh, a little background on Warsteiner. You might remember we reviewed the Oktoberfest. I don't know if it was last October or the October before last, but we've reviewed the Oktoberfest before. Um, just a little reminder on the background of Warsteiner. Warsteiner was started in 1753 by Antonius Kramer. Now Kramer was a farmer was a German farmer, but he was also a home brewer, a very avid home brewer, uh, to the point where he ended up producing too much beer. The local uh, regulators, uh, the local government, decided to start taxing him on the beer he was producing. So he had kind of a dilemma. Well, do I keep just home brewing, or do I take this seriously because now I'm paying taxes? He decided to go commercial and become a pro, so he started... Uh, just ramping up basically his home brewing, I believe, out of his barn. Um, things caught on. It was his son, Johannes, that came along later and actually built out a full-size uh, brewery, production brewery. Um, one of the neat things about Warsteiner is it's still, the Kramer family still involved. After nine generations, they are still involved in the brewery. Uh, Warsteiner is uh, Germany's largest privately owned brewery and I love that because a country like Germany with such a rich brewing tradition to still have some of these families multi-generational still involved in the process and these breweries been around you know hundreds of years you know here in the U.S. Anheuser-Busch and Miller or whatever they're you know over 100, 100 to 150 years old well Warsteiner, we're talking 250, I mean, you know, um, 270 at this point, something like that. So it's just incredible. And again, that the family's uh, still involved. Uh, the brewery itself is actually located in Arnsberger Forest Nature Park. So it's a brewery in a park. How great is this to that? Um, uh, they have a small... Uh, catalog of beers, but uh, all are, are really good. Uh, the Pilsner, which we're going to try today, is probably their most popular beer, the one they're most known for. Uh, they have a Dunkel, which is a dark lager. Uh, they have something now called Warsteiner Fresh. That's their non-alcoholic brew. And of course, the Oktoberfest we talked about. Um, I think over in Europe, not here in the U.S., I also think they do a Hefeweizen that's available over there, but is not uh, distributed here in the U.S., so with that being said, before we try this big boy, let's check out the stats. All right, so today I thought I'd talk to you about the five liter keg, which I got this for. Um, these have always been something I've been wanting to get. You've probably seen them in your liquor store. There's only a few brands that uh, do this package. Um, Heineken's probably the most notable. I believe Coors Light, I think they still do it. I know they did it for a while. Uh, I think Newcastle, and that's under the Heineken umbrella, was doing these five liter kegs. Uh, Bitburger was the first one I ever saw. Uh, a couple of new beers now have gone to these kegs. Uh, Bell's Hop Slam is in uh, one of these five liter kegs. And I've seen the other day Delirium, Delirium Tremens is in that. So imagine a high ABV beer in something like this. I want to say the price is like 70 something dollars for uh, the Delirium Tremens. This one cost me $19.99. Uh, five liters, you should roughly get, you know, 13, 12 to 14 uh, 12 ounce beer. So a little more than a 12 pack is in the, so for $19.99 for a 12 pack of a beer like Warsteiner, that's not terrible, but what a convenient little package. Uh, there are two types of these mini kegs out there. Um, there are ones like this that have the tap in the side, and then Heineken, the Heineken and Newcastle and a couple others, I think Delirium Trim is one, they have a special top that has a, a port for a tap, uh, attachment on top um, they come with a little uh, you'll have to set up the little attachment it has a little tube like a little pour 
uh, for your draft beer, but that's up top. These, like Bitburger and Warsteiner, they come to the side. And this is the one I choose because, as you'll see, they have a little bong or a, a, a stopper. This is removable, which means we can reuse this keg, which is what I'm going to do. I'll do a separate video on how we're able to uh, disassemble, clean this keg, and then reuse it for home brewing. It's something I've always wanted to do. Um, I, want, I want to do a little bit more uh, get involved in the in putting my beer into kegs. Start to producing some draft beer instead of just everything in bottles. But I've always wanted to try one of these, and so when I saw this bad boy, I like I've got to get it. So real quick, let's talk about how to actually get the beer out of this. I'll sit this up here because you're going to have to have it elevated. You'll it has the instructions on the side, but basically you'll pull this tab. Yep. Yep, you loosen this tab, and then you'll pull it out. And you want to pull this out all the way. All right. And now you want to get your glass ready, and you'll turn left to serve. All right, first beer or so is going to be a little foamy. All right, there we go. All right, we got a lot of head on that one. First beer or so is going to uh, foam up on you. Uh, whenever the beer stops flowing, there is a bung on top that will allow you, you'll turn. Ah, see, you can hear that venting. And so now, all right, now, Now we have a little slower flow. There we go. We manage the flow by how much we open this. All right. There we go. A little more head than I wanted, but you kind of see the principle. And then you will just push this back. And voila. You got your beer. Now, like I said, we end up a little more foam, but you can always release that uh, pressure valve. Generally the first beer or two out of this thing, kind of like a regular keg, is going to be a little foamy, but then it'll settle down nice. Um, let's give the beer a try. All right, that's a nice, clean, crisp Pilsner. Uh, very indicative for that style. Um, Got a nice little hop bite at the end. Not strong, but but uh, noticeable. Adds a little crispness to that. Uh, one thing I really like about these style of beers is that kind of crispness. Of course, this is a model beer for a lot of the great American lagers. Um, you know, again, the, the Millers and the Anheuser-Busch Swarber were influenced by their German heritage of these style of beers. And again, they kind of adapted it um, using adjuncts and things like that. Um, obviously, this beer coming from an old brewer in Germany follows the Rheinheiskaboot, you know, uses all malted barley. They're not adding, you know, corn adjuncts or whatever like a lot of the major American beers. Overall, though, nice executed uh, Pilsner, classic of the style. Uh, really cool uh, mini keg, though, and like I said, I'm going to do a video on how we're going to utilize that. So there was a, <laughs> a point to the purchase besides wanting to just drink a lot of beer. Well, I hope you liked this video. If you did, please subscribe down below. Also, please like the video because it lets YouTube know we're putting out good content. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, please leave me in the comment section, or you can always contact me on the Twitter page. Till next time, bottoms up.